So we've said that a parallelogram is a shape with the following properties. And what we've done in all our videos prior to this is we've started off with having parallel sides. And then we did a whole lot of congruency and we proved that the opposite sides would be equal, the opposite angles would be equal, and the diagonals would bisect. Then in a later video we said that, well, what if the diagonals bisect each other? And we don't know anything else. Does that mean it's a parallelogram? Well, yes, remember we did a whole lot of congruency and from that, so we started off with diagonals bisecting and what we were able to work out was that the opposite angles were equal, the opposite sides were equal, and the opposite sides were parallel. And so we said that if you have a, a shape like this, where the diagonals bisect, well then we can also say that it's a parallelogram. And in the previous video we started off by saying, okay, well what if we start off like this? If these sides are the same, does it mean that they are, or that this is a parallelogram? Well yes, we then added a few diagonal lines, did a bit of congruency, and what we were able to prove was that the opposite sides were parallel, the opposite angles were equal, and the diagonals bisected. And that was all by starting from this. So what we could conclude is that if you have a shape like this, where all the opposite sides are equal, you can call it a parallelogram. So what's next for us? Well, the next step is to start off with the following. This is what's next. What if we'd start off with a shape? We don't know if it's a parallelogram just yet, but what we do know is that the opposite angles are equal. And we can see that. I mean, this one has a dot, and C has a dot, and then B has a little X over here, and D has an X. So, is it a parallelogram? Well, to do this, we usually use congruency, and to use congruency, you need triangles. So how do we make triangles? We throw in a diagonal line, like that. Now, don't let this fool you. This little dot over here, let me actually take that out. The whole of this angle is the same, and the whole of that angle is the same. That's what we started off with, right? And let me change the x's as well. So now what we can do is work in these two triangles over here. Whew, that's a bright color. So we can work in those two triangles over there, do a bit of congruency, and let's see what we come up with. So what we definitely could say is we could work in triangle. The yellow one is ACD, and the blue one is triangle ABC. Well, what is the same? Well, we definitely know that angle D is, angle, is equal to angle B. Why? Because that was given. We could say that AC is equal to AC, because obviously it's the same side for both, and the reason for that is common. But now if you had to sit back, you would actually struggle to find a third reason. And there's a bit of a mathematical trick we're going to have to do over here. So we know that these two green angles are the same. So what if we do this? What if we say let A equal X? Well then that means that angle C is going to be X as well. Okay, so we can call these x and this big one x. Then we can let d equal to y. Okay, so that's then that will be y. And that means that angle b is also going to be y. Sorry, these should all have a little triangle over there. And so b, no, not let, therefore b is also going to be equal to y. Now check this out. We know that all four of these angles, what should they add up to? What do four angles inside any type of quadrilateral add up to? 360, right? So we can say that x plus x plus y plus y should equal to 360. So that means that 2x plus 2y equals to 360. Take out a common factor of 2 on the left, and you're left with x plus y equals to 360. And then we can get this bracket alone by dividing by 2, and so that's going to be 360 divided by 2, which is equal to 180. Now let's see what that means for us. It says that x plus y equals 180. So that means that this angle plus this angle equals 180. So wait a minute. Did we just say that this whole angle here plus this whole angle should equal 180? Well, hello, that's part of, remember when we think of parallel lines, we know that when you have a U kind of shape, well, the angles in between should add up to 180, only if these lines are parallel. And so because of this, we can say that, and obviously we should be writing down all the mathematical reasons, and we should say, oh, actually, let's just do that quickly. So we could say, therefore, well, I'm actually just going to write it over here. We can say, therefore, AD is going to be parallel to BC. And we could do the same over here. 
we could see that U shape over there, and we could see here this is a Y, and this whole angle is an X, and because X plus Y equals to 180, it means that those are also parallel. So these two lines are parallel, and these two lines are parallel. So back to where we were before we had to prove that they were parallel. So remember, we were busy doing congruency and we got a little bit stuck because we could only come up with two reasons. Well, now that these lines are parallel, well, that's going to change a lot for us. For example, can you spot the Z? Aha, we can use the Z now because those lines are parallel. And so we could say that this little angle is equal to that little angle. So we could, and what is this one over here? Well, that's going to be BAC. We can't just say A because that could also represent this part. So we say BAC with a little thing over there. That's going to be equal to ACD. And the reason for that is alternating angles. Why can we say alternating angles? Well, because we now know that AB is parallel to CD. So there we have found three things, and so therefore we can say, therefore, triangle ACD is congruent using three lines to triangle. Well, we definitely know that this D is going to go with this B over here. And so here's the D, so we know that the last letter in this triangle must be the B. Then we know that this angle A, well, that must match this angle C. So this C must match A over there. And so then the other letter would just be C over there. And the reason for this is going to be, well, this is a side, this is an angle, and this over here is an angle. And so we can say side, angle, angle. And so let's see what we can take from that now, because now we have just proved that these two triangles are congruent. Well, what that now means is that this length over here is going to be exactly the same as this length, and this length over here is going to be exactly the same as this length over here. And so let's have a quick check to see what we have. So we've proven that the opposite ang uh, sides are parallel. So we can tick that one off. We've just proven that the opposite sides are equal. And so all that we need now is to show that the diagonals bisect. So that means we're going to need two diagonals. And so I'm not going to do that now because we have done this in previous videos. But what you would do is add another diagonal. And then the goal would be to prove the following. So let me just add another letter over here. So that could be E. And then we'll call it 1, 2, 3, 4. So our goal would be to prove that this side is equal to this side over here. And this side here is equal to this one over here. And so we're going to do that using congruency, where you have the choice between working in these two triangles or these two. And so let's quickly have a look and see how that would have worked. Well, we already know that this side is equal to that side, so that's one thing. We already know that this angle is the same as this angle because of vertically opposite. And we already know that these two sides are parallel. And so by using the Z, we could say that this angle here is the same as this angle here. And that would have given us three things. And so we could say that those two triangles were congruent using side angle angle. The reason I'm not writing it down is just to save time, but we have looked at how to do this in previous videos. And so then we would have had that we would have proven that these two triangles were congruent. And so what could we have extracted from that? Well, that would have meant that this side over here is going to be the same as this side here. And then this side, I'll show with four lines, would be the same as this one over there. And so there we could say that the diagonals bisect each other. And so there we have it. So if we start off with the following, we can then use congruency to prove that this, or we can prove that all of these properties are true. And so we can say that this is a parallelogram. Just as we see it like that, that is a parallelogram. A parallelogram is any shape where the opposite angles are parallel. Not parallel, where they are equal.